Okay, this is going to be a, a quick and somewhat dirty, because I'm doing it on a phone, uh, version update to my uh, RSNAV update process video. Um, the other one didn't really go over the USB drive and the creation thereof, um, so I figured I'd, I'd do a better job. Anyways, so to start with, you get the information from wiki.rsnav.com. Uh, when you get there, each page is going to look like this. Over the side here, you're going to see a software updates link that brings you to this page now this page is is important to read um, for a few reasons one it tells you that the um, usb has to be formatted fat32 that's important not all your usbs will so if you're using one you may find one that's fat16 you may find one that's ntfs you have to make sure it's formatted fat32 i'll show you that in a second it also shows you the how the the full file um, structure should look for the update. Now this is wrong here. Um, it will not have the Audi part of the file name. You'll see that in a second. So that is not necessary in the new updates. They do not have that. It's missing that Audi part here to the file name. The other thing it tells you is that you can't have um, ES File Explorer installed on your RSNAV when you're updating it. You need to make sure you remove that if you've installed it since. Um, there's a CX file explorer by normally on the RSNAV. That's the one that you want to use. Um, ES file explorer you do not want to have. So uh, if you go here, down here, there's a link. It brings you to the actual drive repository. Uh, you go to the right version. In my case, it's the 10.25 and the 12.3 because I have the 12.3. You find the file, right click, and download, right? That'll take a little while to download. It's a pretty big file. Um, so I pre-downloaded it. So over here, if we go to downloads, you'll see this is the file that you end up getting. It's a zip file. So we'll talk about that in a second. First, quickly, the USB drive. The USB drive, you have to make sure it's formatted FAT32, as I mentioned before. So if you take the USB drive, assuming you're a Windows machine, right click on it and go to format. Mine's taking a minute to come up. Um, we'll figure out what version, uh, what type of format is actually on that drive. And again, we're looking for it to be FAT32. So I'm going to go to format and you can see it is FAT32. You don't have to name it anything special. Um, it can be, it doesn't even have to be more than like a couple gigs um, big because the file update's not that big. Mine happens to be a 32 or a 30 gigabyte one. Um, <clears throat> now, if you weren't FAT32, you would select FAT32 from the drop down menu and then you do a quick format. I don't have to do that, so I'm gonna close. So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna open the zip file you downloaded from the RSNAV wiki and here's this update file inside of it. You're gonna drag that onto the actual drive, right? Which will take the zipped firm and unzip it onto the updater, all right? So that's what you want to do first. So it's going to copy the stuff over. And when it's done, you will have the update directory here on your USB drive. Now, notice I have these two other little directories. Those have been there for a while because I have used this prior, this USB prior in my um, RSNAV. So it has sort of uh, created the directory structure needed at the Android system to, to access it. You can do that easily by just inserting into your RSNAV um, USB port and trying to open up in CX Explorer. It will put these files on. Um, my experience is that if you don't have those files, if you've never used the USB drive in an RSNAV before, that it may not update correctly. Um, but under the update, directory, which is the only other directory again on the USB drive. You've got these two, which are created by Android. And then you've got the update, right? Which has an MCU update and update uh, zip file. Now that's all you need to do the update. Now, one of the things, questions, does it update the MCU? Yes, it's supposed to, if there is a need to. Um, mine uh, is up to date, so I don't think it's going to do anything. Um, now inside here, you'll see there's a bunch of stuff the other thing you'll notice is the name again here is not, does not have the Audi, the underscore Audi part that was mentioned in the instructions here. 
That is fine. That will work, even though it's just the instructions need to be updated. Um, so now I've got my USB created. Now I just need to bring it downstairs um, and uh, get into the car to do the rest of it. Okay, again, sorry for the glare. I'm using the my phone here. But anyways, you take the USB and car is on. You want the car on just because you don't want any interruptions of power. So you keep the car on, you take the USB, you put it in the USB slot. I'm gonna put it in mine, you won't see it because it's actually um, tucked under the, the, the in the passenger side. Um, so I'm gonna install it now. Now when you push it in, you're gonna get this message about CX File Explorer. So I'm gonna hit cancel. Then we're gonna go into settings, system, version information, then we're going to hit MSB, USB update. So we'll press that. Are you ready to start the update? Yes. And here we go. It's verifying the files, etc., etc. So we'll watch this. I'll leave it working and videoing. Um, try and speed it up when I do the final. Okay, so if we uh, look, it took about five minutes, rebooted twice, um, but it seems to be done. And uh, if we go to settings and we look at the versions under system, then we can see that uh, the MCU is the same, uh, but the system version is different. It's updated the system version only from the USB update. Now, I think that's because the MCU version is the same that it used to be. It hasn't been updated. Um, so that's probably why um, because again my understanding is the system update should update both but they can be updated independently as you say um, so that's all there is to it at this point it is updated and your USB drive is no longer needed so you can pop that out